Oh, yeah. Yeah, digital painting as we continue with just more refined painting. I'm doing it on layers upon layers, right? The answer is always more paint. That also makes the, the surface of the painting more satisfying at the, at the end when we print it, right? So that's roughly 100%. That's what you're going to see. You can still see the base painting layer, just that circle coming in for the highlight. It's kind of interesting. Same here in this eye. But other places, that's not so interesting. And so you want to have kind of a finish over everything. That's where you use these refined paint layers. You soften things out. Sometimes when it's this stage of refined painting, I go to a higher opacity so I can kind of make change quicker. But there's a lot there. That edge thing is so sharp. <laughs> there we go, because I'm only at 70%. So, yeah, so painting a full opacity with a brush that's low opacity, then you can make these adjustments you need. Like the little glints that come through. You can definitely use the smudge tool, especially when you get away from more of the um, the focal points like in the hair it might be really nice to use the smudge tool push some stuff around make those shadows have a little bit softer edge depth you can restate not just shadows but also highlights if I want to build a little bit of her age into the image, I can do kind of the wrinkles on her brow. They're subtle, but they're there, depending on her expression. And then I can use that smudge tool to soften those out, bring them back. make them more believable. Right. Then I can always just paint over them at a different opacity with a different color and that will soften them too. Change their effect. My brush go. There it is. So let's yeah, I can stay at 50. And in my uh, traditional painting practice, I've actually learned a little bit from things I like about digital painting in that in my studio where I, I paint on the opposite wall of the wall I set up my larger paintings, I have a camera tripod set up and I'll take process photos as I go just like this, so I can see has, how things develop over time. And I realize even when I'm kind of stuck in a painting and I, I keep working on it, it doesn't seem like anything's changing. I can look back at the photos and realize, no, a lot's changing. It's just, it's, it can feel like a long slog building this up. Because as soon as you kind of establish a new level of finish, then you got to work everything up to that level. And sometimes the process goes great. You're, you get into a kind of a good flow. Everything's really rewarding. Seems like you can't do anything wrong. Other times it just seems like you're messing up everything you do. Right? At least in digital art, you can do it in different layers. You can play with the opacity of those things. Yeah, you can totally correct and replace anything that's not working. And if you were doing real painting, Yeah, depending on the traditional type of paint, like oil paint's pretty easy to paint over, but you have to wait for it then to dry. Yeah, so this 
gives you a lot of versatility. All right, so we are close to finishing the refined painting. There's just the little areas I still need to give the same amount of finish as everything else, especially the bottom edge here and kind of finding the shape of the shoulder. I can go back to my, my sketches for that. I can have that sketch turned back on and then that can encourage me to, to push it a little bit stronger in certain places. And then we'll try to finish these off for next class. We'll have about half of next class period to work on them. And then the next part of next class, the important class, is introducing your final project and all the, the concept sketching we need to do and the critiques we'll have coming up with your ideas for your final project, which will be graded by class critique. So the theme you'll have is just one phrase, right? You can all interpret it differently, and then you can use any, any kind of digital art techniques to interpret that theme. And you can, if you want a preview of that to come with some ideas, you can see that under assignments in Canvas it's for our final project. Question, Alex? So lab hours, let's see, let me check my calendar. So Friday morning, I should have them. I have them until 11, so from 9 to 11 on Friday. You'll, I'll try to prop the door open here, but you can always send me an inbox message if the door is locked for whatever reason, I'll come down and unlock it. Yep. So if you want to get some extra time working on past projects, working on your digital painting, printing for your final portfolio. Friday, 9 to 11. I'll be in here. So these are brushes that we made as part of the demo. So we're going to be learning how to make our own brushes. And they're not too different than ones that you can download and use. And it's not so much the brush shape that matters, it's the brush settings that matter. So we're going to learn what all of these mean and which ones are most useful. Yeah, I'm using a brush that I made that allows it to have these variable edges. So it, it does feel a lot like it's a watercolor or a soft bristle brush that every time I paint with a low opacity it kind of blends with what's around it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's partially your settings. It's also just partially how you how you use it, right? Like what opacity you're using it at and how many layers you want to build up. But to me, since I'm used to traditional painting, like you can't go wrong building up more and more layers because that feels more like it's a real material than just a given space filled in with set pixels. Yeah, so we have refined paint layers. That's the base painting layer. That's just with default brushes. But then when you start building up with refined brushes, you can start blending between them. They're also at lower opacity, so it's showing more of what comes. And then you just keep building up like that. Yeah. Oh, 